It is exactly 20 minutes to the top of the hour. Welcome back to Sunday Live here at Citizen Television. Now, Abdir Qadir Hussein Mohammed was the man Kenyans trusted as they put in place a new constitution. As the Parliamentary Select Committee on Constitutional Review Chairman, he was often a voice of reason during the raging debates. It is 13 years to the day of the Constitution of Kenya 2010 when it was promulgated. So we take stock, look at the hits and the misses, and the long journey to fully implement it with constitutional lawyer, senior counsel, Abdikadir Hussein Mohammed, who joins us now in studio. Essie, good to see you. Same here, my friend. Do you remember that day? Yes, I do. It was this day, right? Yes, August yes, 27th, yes, 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 2010. Indeed. I remember dancing in uh, Uhuru Park, actually. Very excited. Yeah. It was a wonderful day. Yeah. Yes. Did you think that day would come, despite everything that you had all gone through? Remember, we're coming off the post-election violence, uh, the failed referendum of 2005. Yeah. So there was nothing guaranteed. It was really a struggle. You, many Kenyans, many of them young, don't remember. But there was a time people in Nairobi were praying for a man called Kofi Annan not to leave town until we had settlement. So it was really, it was really uh, tough times. Uh, but uh, we had faith in the, in the nation and uh, we delivered as a country. And, and 13 years later, I'm a very proud man myself. Of course, we have had challenges, we have ups and downs, but uh, we have done something not possible in many African countries, not have been, in many countries, actually, let me not even say many African countries. Just last week, we had, I met a delegation from Yemen who are out here to learn from us because they are just about to conclude their civil war and they're going into that process right now. Right. So yes, uh, historic, uh, a very blessed day, a wonderful day, and um, uh, we have a lot to thank for those days. Yes, oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Senior Counsel, you talked about challenges which we'll get to, yeah. but when you look back on the celebration, the joy, the yes. hope yes. Kenyans yes. had, yes. has that document lived up to what it was meant to achieve? Yes, yes, uh, in many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, remember, as I said, we were a broken country, so to speak. We needed something to bring us back together, and the Constitution did. That process did. The moment did bring us back together, gave us confidence again as a country to move forward. Uh, we delivered on very many new institutions. We didn't have a Supreme Court. We have an active Supreme Court now. We didn't have devolution. Mm -hmm. We have devolution. We didn't have as many women as we have in Parliament. Now, we didn't have have uh, many, many new things. Of course, there are very many missed targets also, and as you said, we'll get back to those. But yes, we, we are a, a, a confident, noisy country, yes, but we are a country that has moved forward. Nairobi and Kenya are a very different place from 13 years ago. If you were, if you were taken off Nairobi and brought back 13 years down the line, you would certainly see a lot of changes, yes. Okay, talking about hits and misses, if mm. you were to say the biggest achievement in 13 years, yes. what would that be? Devolution. Devolution has really revolutionized the country. It's really, as, as, as those who are in Eldred a few days ago will tell you, it has not lived up to its full potential indeed, but devolution has really revolutionized. The other is the Bill of Rights. We, have, we are a different country. We have an independent judiciary because of that Bill of Rights. Uh, again, many young Kenyans might not know, but there was a time when we could not speak like we speak now. When, and again, uh, talking to the Yemenis last week myself, things I could say so freely. I mean, you can criticize the president, you can criticize anybody the way you wish. That was not possible a few decades ago. So uh, uh, we, have, we have a lot to, to be thankful for, and we have a lot of challenges ahead of us, and we have very many missed opportunities too. Yeah. Before we get to the Mrs. Uh, senior counsel, yeah. I have to ask this, because when it started this whole process, yes. we can argue that it was people-driven. Yes. But now as we're looking at implementing it, yes. is it people-centered from where you sit? Uh, in terms of the constitutional infrastructure, yes. Okay. In other words, in terms of the, what the Americans would call the black letter of the law, in terms of what is written in the document, absolutely yes. In terms of practically how it has been implemented to a large extent, no. Because of the, our ancient regime, what I call our ancient regime, it's very difficult to reform. A change is not easy. And 
our state was cultured first as a colonial state and post-colonial as essentially an African colonial state, so to speak, quote unquote. And we have not, it's very difficult to change. So that has clawed back quite a bit of, of, uh, of uh, the promises of the constitution. But yeah, uh, the constitution keeps on reminding us as we move forward. And, and when I was, I was the advisor to the president, but when the Supreme Court struck down the elections. It was a huge moment, I mean, uh, 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 seriously. Uh, the other day, so, so many times when BBI was, was, was thrown out by the Constitutional Court, many times we get to be reminded, or, or, or just the other day when the CESs were, were, were canceled. All those could not, could not be possible without our old constitution. In fact, just taking that case to court would not be possible without our old constitution. So yes, uh, uh, the people-centered nature of the constitution is very clear. Practically, we have uh, some way to go. So has the falling short not really been with the black letter you just yes, talked yes, about, but yes. really with the people who are the custodians yeah, yeah, yeah. to implement yeah, it? Would yes, you say that? Yes, yes indeed. Yes, Yes, indeed. Uh, politicians, unfortunately or fortunately, are the people who in most countries are, are, are charged with running the state mm -hmm. by the people. And uh, we have political problems which emanate from our culture, which is why, in my opinion, uh, trying to resolve the political cultural problems you have through constitutional amendments is not going to work, in my opinion, unfortunately. Yeah. Senior Council, you were talking about a Bill of Rights a moment ago. Indeed, indeed, and indeed. Uh, the fact that we know. People forget that a couple of decades ago, during Moy's time, yes. or during one party state, yes. we couldn't do a lot of the things Absolutely. that we do today. Absolutely. But the question is, yes. there's some people who argue that yes. our freedoms are too free. Yes. There's too much freedom. Not really. I mean, uh, uh, our freedoms are the basic freedoms, first of all. So the right to life, the right. So those, uh, freedom of the press, the right to speak freely, those you really cannot be too free. It is a tension between the old school, centralized, uh, typically in the security sector, uh, versus liberty. Do we, do we go for liberty or do we go for stability and security? That tension is there in every constitution. In our case, the, there was a time, uh, I remember in government, the term activist was derogatory. Mm -hmm. the, there was a time activists were celebrated. Uh, the, the lawyers who pushed very hard, the human rights activists who put, were all celebrated. But within the first administration or the second administration of, 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 of uh, President Kenyatta, for example, the second President Kenyatta, activism became a, 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 a very bad term. If somebody called you activist in government, they were essentially telling you you are not uh, uh, there properly. So those tensions are there, and many other tensions usually exist, but absolutely, I, I would any day err on the side of, of freedom than, than uh, not having freedom, mm. yes. So if you were to rate the implementation process so far, Senior yes. Council, yes. Um, on a scale of zero to 10, yes. where would you put six? Six. Yes. A One. solid six. A solid six. A solid six because the, the entire constitution is something new and we have a lot of it achieved. So for example, as I told you, we have very many new institutions. Mm -hmm. All of them required implementation. We have hundreds of laws, all of them required implementation. And if you remember, as part of the constitution was a schedule of things to be done. Those things were all done. Now, doing them, and leaving them or implementing them is a different matter. I mean, you have, for example, commissions. The commissions are there, the laws to, for the commissions are there, but the executive has done everything in its power to make sure those commissions don't work, whether it is politicians uh, crippling the, uh, the anti-corruption mechanism, or the Minister of Lands refusing for the Land Commission to work, or the police refusing for the police commission to do it is work. So the, the implementation is not yet fully done. Mm. So what's the solution to that? One of the issues we really have to, to struggle with, one is a culture of constitutionalism. So for example, now we have uh, President Roto and former Prime Minister uh, uh, Raila working towards some proposed uh, uh, constitutional amendment. Both gentlemen have a lot of history with the constitution. Unfortunately, both of them put their politics before the constitution and, and see the constitution essentially as a means to an end. So constitutional culture is very key because the constitution really is an idea. 
it cannot be legislated. The ideas, the culture cannot be legislated. So it's a cultural change. Our politics is ethnic based. And if you have an ethnic based politics producing politicians, then those politicians cannot be nationalists and statesmen and women all of a sudden. They, they, are, they are ethnic chieftains and uh, uh, we have quite a bit of corruption in our system. So those are the things to, to, to deal with, not the constitution or the law or the, the letter of the law, so to speak, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So senior counsel, let's talk about amendments. Uh, during the break, we were just talking about how yes. many amendments the US constitution has. 27. 27. So far, yes. In 247 So many years, yes. And you know, it's a very difficult process. Yes, it's a us. very, very difficult process. And it's meant to be difficult because you're, we went through a very long process mm -hmm. and we took this very seriously. Remember, the Guy Commission went to every village. Remember, we have been on this since the birth of the nation, essentially. So let me bore you with a bit of a history of our constitution. When the colonialists were, when, when the nationalists were fighting for independence, there were basically two camps. There were the centrist camps, which are mainly the large communities, and there were the devolved or a federalist uh, a camp, which was mostly the, the, uh, the, the smaller communities. The colonialists sided with the smaller communities, essentially to delay independence. What the, the, the other group decided was, look, let's agree to what they want. We will be majority and we're going to amend the constitution anyway. And that's exactly what, what, what they did. So in 1963, we had a federal setup, and immediately thereafter, Kanu went on a, on a process which had, they had agreed previously of amending the constitution. So that in a short couple of years later, we really did not have the same constitution we had at the beginning. We had a completely different animal, a mongrel, so to speak. We had a parliamentary system at the beginning with a federal setup. We didn't have that anymore. We had a mixture where Jomo Kenyatta was never elected as president. He was a prime minister by amendment, and that's how it stayed. So we need to make it difficult for amendments. So one of the famous amendments of the old constitution was a man called Ngei. Ngei was a minister, a good friend of, of Jomo Kenyatta. He lost the election, went and, and was declared by an election court guilty of an election offense. And the constitution said if you are declared guilty of an election offense, you cannot run for five years. And Kenyatta didn't want Ngei out of, 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 of cabinet. So he pushed up an amendment and parliament amended the constitution one afternoon and removed that, uh, that process. And so many other such amendments, including the former uh, section 2A of the constitution. So most constitutions make it very difficult to amend. Ours is one of those. In fact, there are different layers of requirement. For some of the articles, you cannot just go to parliament and amend. You have to really go back to the people for a referendum. So it's important to make it difficult, and we should have as few amendments as possible, unless we are, we are not serious with the constitution in the first place. In the last 13 years, there have mm. been four attempts yes. to make amendments yes. in your council. So yes. in which case would you yes. say warrants amendments? So first of all, cons the constitution can be amended and should be amended when it's appropriate. Okay. There are certain things we needed which we haven't got. There are certain things that have not worked very well which we need to. For example, sec, uh, chapter six essentially has not been implemented at all, at all. Since it has not worked, if there was a serious attempt to say how do we make section six work, that is something that the country needs in my opinion. We have not implemented the gender rule. We need to make the amendment of the constitution in such a way that it's possible to, to deliver that, for example. Our commissions have not worked well, mostly because the politicians have not let them, let them work. If there is a way to make that, I would probably think that is the best way. The, the one we should not do is for political expediency. In other words, to resolve an immediate political problem between two competing political groupings. Real quick, uh, one big miss, yeah. two-thirds gender rule. Yes. Very disappointing. Very disappointing and purely from our cultural setup. Essentially, the majority of members of parliament are men. And the majority of men don't see the value in having more women in parliament, unfortunately. And that's completely wrong. So that's the reason. It's not because 
the law is not there. And in that sense, parliament is breaching the constitution. And the court, the Maraga court, to their credit, actually said that parliament in that sense should be held to account for breaching the law. Yes. Senior Council, at the end of the day, you hopeful? Yes, absolutely. The absolutely. next 13 years, the next? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There is, there is no reason why we should not be un we're un hopeful as a country, and we should be proud of our constitution. Many, many people see it as an excellent constitution, as a progressive constitution. What we should be pushing for is to implement it, not to amend it. Absolutely. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Senior Counsel Ahmed Abdelkadir Mohamed, good to see you. Thank you. And all the very best. Congratulations. All the best, most. 13 years nice later. Yep, mm -hmm. here we are.